Forgive me. Please, forgive me. May you and your kin find peace. Wherever your souls may drift in the underworld, may you find tranquil seas. Be not forgotten, in concept endure, 
to reclaim form and one day live again. Serve not the star or any purpose save your own. Live again, if that be your desire. Hate, if that be your want. We are worthy, but leave your suffering behind. Lay down your burdens, be born anew. Fly high, fly free. Join the convocation, Hermes. You do not belong here. Leave to replace another. To be replaced. It changes nothing. Tell me, do you think it right that we sacrifice all these lives for the sake of the star? And when the star has reached perfection, what then? If all who are satisfied choose to die, shall we all die in satisfaction? I do not know. Were I to take up the seat of Van Daniel, it would be tantamount to approving my predecessor's death. I do not know if it is right. And to be torn by such thoughts, I do not know if I am fit to represent mankind. Forgive me. If you would still consider me in spite of everything, I beg some time to gather my thoughts. Meanwhile, Hithlidaeus, I fear I must trouble you to attend to the others. Tis no trouble at all. Take as long as you require. And you, my friend, I pray you find that which you seek. I expect we have some few matters to discuss. Shall we return to the Twelve Wonders for a time? Aye.
I present to you Calamelios Zephyros. Here you will find a number of testing facilities, as well as the observation hub of Poiton Oikos. Right then, let's begin by... Hmm. Well, well, an Araeus. How delightful. And what, pray tell, is that? Ah, that's a new species of shark. We approved the concept but a few days ago. Sharks are among the most popular sea creatures. Rare is the day when someone does not submit a new concept. At first, they were largely orthodox. Consideration given to such things as size and environmental impact. And then a whimsical someone thought to bestow it with flight. Another superior intelligence. And then the floodgates burst. Concepts with multiple heads or arms or legs or arms and legs and so on and so forth. It was getting absurd. A part of me wanted to tell them to go away and find something else to create, but I couldn't deny their passion. And here we are. That was too close. Are you unharmed? Well now, if it isn't a pair of familiar faces. Banar, that we should meet you here. As I mentioned earlier, the better part of the Convocation holds that when we retire is when we return to the star. Well, she is not among said majority. Even after stepping down, she carries on with her work. Vanar is her name, and she is the previous Azim. It has been a while, Hithlidaeus. You look well. Less so, Emmet Selk. I dare say the lines upon your brow have both deepened and doubled in number. A shame for one so young. You must make an effort to frown less often. Easier said than done, thanks to your unruly successor. How is he, if I may ask? incorrigible as ever. Rushed headlong into a volcano on the brink of eruption just the other day. I should be glad to share the tale in its entirety later, if you're so inclined. Ha! Oh, you know I am. Now then, you are? chance come from the future. I do not believe we have ever met, yet I sense my magic upon you. Therefore, if I wove the enchantment, I could only have done so at a later point in time. What manner of magic is this, if I may ask? A traveler's ward, of course. It prevents the corruption of one's ether. Primals, you say? 
But I'm not familiar with such beings. But if they enthrall by warping the balance of ether, then yes, the magic would afford you a measure of protection. I gather from your question that you are not ignorant to its presence. Hold on. From the future? That's absurd. What is it? Are you unable to speak of the matter? The reality to which you must return exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. So, your actions here will not change your history, but they may yet affect the course of ours. How very exciting! I'm quite fond of delving into the unknown, and there's naught more unknown than the future. Until a moment finally arrives, we cannot know for certain what will come to pass, regardless of our supposed foreknowledge. So you needn't worry for us. More importantly, that you should go to such great lengths as to travel unto the past bespeaks the gravity of your quest. Will you not reveal it to us? Mayhap we can be of aid to your cause. If this is true, then you've been keeping quite the secret to yourself. As a representative of the Convocation, I will hear it all. Your identity, purpose, everything. Why don't we move to a place more conducive to calm conversation? I've been working here for some days now at an old friend's behest. If it is agreeable, we may make use of my accommodation at Poiton Oikos. We were meant to meet. I am certain of it. Else I wouldn't have marked you so clearly and sent you unto myself in the past. It's precisely the sort of mischief I would get up to, and quite inspired, if I do say so myself.
Wonderful aroma. I feel more relaxed already. Would that I had sweetmeats to offer, but I travel light out of habit. 
There's plenty of hot water, though, so please have as much tea as you like. Now then, will you tell us your tale? Why don't you start from the beginning? Preposterous! Utterly preposterous! While not the words I would have chosen, I too have my doubts. Much of it borders on the incredulous. What of you, Vanar? Not knowing the precise details of the first final days, it is difficult to determine the veracity of the tale. Supposing it is all true, I must ask myself why I would do what I did. Why would I feel I had no recourse but to oppose the Fourteen and create this Hydaelyn? Circumstances change, of course, but it would not have been an easy decision regardless. No, there must have been a reason. One compelling enough to force me to take such drastic measures. Then there is the Elpis flower, which I said would serve as a guide. That it's of import to your mission is plain, but your presence here leads me to believe that this place also holds significance. But what could it be? What are we meant to accomplish? Might it not be simply thus? In the future whence he came, the final days could not be averted. Mankind has no choice but to flee the star. By alerting us to that eventuality, perhaps you wish to pave the way for other futures. Theoretically speaking, it is a possibility. Yet if that were my primary objective, I see no reason to guide our friend to Elpis specifically. The capital and Amarot, or even my own home, would be more logical destinations. True, true. I note also that Heidelin did not specify a point in time to which he must return. By this, it may be inferred that it was not critical that we should meet. Alternately, she had reason to believe that our paths would converge, coincidental though it may seem. Hmm. 
this is quite a puzzle, and we do not have all the pieces. Hardly any, but we do have one immutable fact. If the final days are indeed as described, they will bring death to all that I hold dear. Yet despite being afforded long years of preparation, the only provisions I could make were... for flight. Nay, my first and foremost endeavor would be to find a way to forestall the coming doom. Given that even the Fourteen failed, mayhap you deemed it impossible. Nothing is impossible. This I have always believed. And if Heidelin is indeed me, she would believe the same. Listen to yourself. Are you seriously entertaining the notion that you are a messianic figure in some far-fetched tale? Well, I will not. I refuse to accept that our world could be undone by some unforeseen calamity. I also take offense to my portrayal as a megalomaniacal madman. To sacrifice oneself for the star is a noble act, and I would hold those who gave themselves to this zodiac in the highest esteem. Yet, you claim I recreated Amarot and populated it with phantoms of our people? A bizarre indulgence that would be insulting to their memory. Worse still, I even invited you there. Literally invited my own downfall. Why would I do something so idiotic and inexplicable? Now, I will allow that the hypothetical task of restoring our world would be daunting in the extreme. The thought of having to bear such a burden for a thousand, thousand lives horrifies me. But I would never forsake my duty. I would never forsake my brethren. You do not know me. I've had my fill of your fiction. I will return to my duty, and you will not bother me again. Emmett Self! Wait! You've seen much of Elpis already. If you have any observations to share, I should like to hear them. Hermes and his creation Meteon, you say? If Dynamis is the self-same energy as Akasha, as it likely seems, then those two may well be at the center of the calamity to come. This warrants further investigation. With that settled, it is time for action. The missing pieces of the puzzle are here, I'm certain of it. And when you find them, the picture my future self has painted will be complete, and you will have your answer. And suffice it to say, I will aid you in your quest. Have faith. If Emmet Selk is the man Azum described to me, we've not seen the last of him.